Hi, it's Suzanne from MoonsongDesigns.com. Thank you for joining me. Today's project uses the uh, Sweet Storybook stamp set, which I think is just really nice. Um, when I saw it in, saw it in the catalogue, um, I just thought, oh, that's lovely. I have to have that because I just think it's really sweet. And I made a card with it, which um, I posted to my blog a few days ago. And when I was using these and cutting them out, I thought that they would actually be a very versatile stamp. So I came up with a box and it's a very simple lidded box. Um, I've used one of our new colours which is Highland Heather which I think is just a beautiful purple um, and with, with a thick whisper white base. So I'll show you how to make it. It's got a window sheet and I think it would be good for uh, candles, for skincare, for sweets, for whatever really. Um, I think it's a really nice sized box. So I'm sorry if it's a bit dark but the sun keeps going in um, which is perfect timing. Right so for the base you need a piece of cardstock which is 20 by 21 centimeters. I'll put all the uh, measurements on the blog. Uh, Imperial and metric, I don't need the arm. So we score this at five centimetres on all four sides. When I was doing the top, sorry about that, unsteady camera, I need to get my tripod sorted. So I've scored on the base, the Whisper White, I've scored it at five centimetres all the way around. And now I'm going to, I might fold and burnish because I can't actually see the score lines very well because it is dark. It was lovely and sunny earlier. Um, we've had rain this morning. It's been very strange weather this summer in the UK. I'm not complaining because I like the heat, but um, I'm not so keen on the humidity, which we've had quite a lot of. Um, but the last couple of days have been much, much cooler, and it does mean you can get stuff done around the house. It's, uh, it's much easier to, to work. So what we do is as always just cut up the score lines which you probably can't see because I can't see them either and notch there and there and then just chop a little bit off the bottom. Um, I usually take about I guess about a third off and like that and like that and again a bit off the bottom and third one. I like making these kind of boxes because actually um, you know they're pretty simple to do there's no really complicated mechanisms they're quite quick to knock up if you know you've got a gift that you want to give to a friend and you want to get some nice packaging for it. Um, turn the tape. Oh! If it's not one thing in this house it's the other and that was the other it's just, he's a swine. Swine, I tell you. Right, never works with cats. Cats. Right, so my tear and tape. I'm going to hope that he stays on the windowsill. Um, so a little bit along that crease line there. I'm going to cut it because it's easier for me. And then I'm going to put another piece here because, as you know, we have no, um, we've dispensed, oh dear, we've dispensed with fast fuse just as I got used to it. And I miss it. I have to, I, I'm on it. If I'm honest, I do miss fast fuse. I find it much quicker than, than the tear and tape, although tear and tape gives you such a good, um, it's really strong so it's just one of those things I think where you just have to get please go away you just have to get used to things could you go away don't knock the camera I've not trimmed this No. Oh, is it just me? I, I, 
does everybody else have difficult cats? Please tell me you do. I don't know whether I'm the only one that has a really naughty has really naughty cats. I mean I love them to pieces, but they do pick their moments. Right, if I can get his bottom out of the way, I shall grab my pokey gadget. Um, so I'm just going to smooth that down. Sorry, I'm wibbling the camera. Just make sure that's nice and smooth. And then using my pokey tool, I'm going to try and get these the backing off. The problem with tear and tape is you have a lot of mess afterwards. Right, so I'm just going to make up the box, which is simply making sure that the, I was going to say the seams, the um, folds are matched up nicely. So you get nice, smooth seams like that. Um, and then we can get on to the lid. Now, the lid, um, I had to adjust it because when I was doing my prototype, I realised that it wouldn't fit through the big shot. So if you don't want or haven't got a big shot or you don't want to use the big shot um, for making a window, then you, can have, you could make the, the box lid bigger if you wanted to. Um, but obviously I needed something that's going to go through. Right, now the colour we're using for this, uh, as I said, is, um, hello, you've got my ink, cat, oh, he is, I think he's sitting on my ink, so we'll score this, to hello, third time lucky, I hope, um, this piece of cardstock is 16 by 15 um, but then you need to add one millimeter to each of those dimensions so it's 16 and a smidgen by 15 and a smidgen um, and smidgen is a technical term and then you score at two and a half I'm not sure what size I cut that, that card, last piece of card to but it certainly wasn't right and then the last side is like that. Okay, get that out of the way. Um, so we need now to place our thinlet, and this is the thinlets. These are the thinlets. Cat hairs all stuck in on the the glue. So we're going to need that one, which is obviously our leaf, and we're going to need that one, which cuts out our aperture. And then you've got this cuts out the mice. Going to need that later for the tag and then you've got three little flowers i think they look like duck's feet but they're probably not supposed to supposed to be so don't forget the card is a little bigger than in one direction so that's the 15 by the 16. on the framelet the thinlet you have framelet you have a little arrow here which shows you which way up you're doing it. You, you need to do it. Now, I came up with the size of the box based on the leaves because this this is going to cut your leaves, the, the this leaf garland out for you. Um, and so I measured this and then added a little bit to make sure that the leaves were going to fit on the top of the box. And then if you look at this, You can see that the, le the leaves, if I bring this back, you can see that the leaves sweep up. And <clears throat> so this is the top of your framelit for the leaves. This little arrow signifies the top of this for cutting the aperture. And if you look there, it, it fits quite. Right, let's try and get this finished before something else happens. That was the door, which is why the dog was creating. So as you can see, um, this tells you which is the top of this framelit and this is the one we need for cutting this. So 
I'm using the magnetic platform and a base plate. I do have other base plates, but uh, I haven't used them yet. And then making sure we know which way round we want this because obviously the box is, is slightly longer than it is wide, so it needs to go that way. Um, and that's the top. I'm going to try and pop that in the middle and I will cut this off camera because every time I breathe the, the camera falls off its tripod. Um, I do actually have a big tripod and I do actually have a little widget to attach the camera to it. I just don't know where the little widget happens to be. So very carefully trying not to wobble the table. I will just cut this out. only need one pass. There you go. Let's sit down for a second. I'll be doing the leaves shortly so the big shot needs to stay somewhere handy. So I'll pop this back on here because otherwise I will lose it. So there we have the aperture um, in our box, the, in, in the lid of the box. And I'm going to fold and burn into this now. Um, and I'm going to attach, I don't know why the table's suddenly wobbly. I'll have to have a look at the legs. I'm going to attach um, a window sheet. I need to get some more window sheet because I haven't got a lot. So, right, so my window sheet, a little scrap here, which will fit perfectly. Um, and my glue dots were here. There we go. Glue dots and a pokey thing. There's one in each corner. Like that. When I was devising the box, I hadn't actually thought about putting window sheets on, but then I realised that um, if I didn't, if you put small items in, then you're going to lose them. So, popping... Is this a bit big? No. Just making sure it covers the whole of the window. Sorry, this is making you feel a bit seasick. And that's the lid of my box. But I'm not going to put the box together until I've got the... Um, the stamped element. So I need some Whisper White cardstock. I need... I've now got, because I've had to do this half a dozen times, I've got so many bits of cardstock. So this is the ink, it's Balmy Blue and this stamp set and it's this one. Now the stamp is a single stamp, the same as the mice, it's, it's single. Um, but you know, you can um, but when you cut them out, it does separate them like that. Oops, is that going to fit on there? Yes. Now, I don't know whether this is going to need stamping off or not because it's the first time I've used the colour. First time I've even, even I've opened the stamp set, so I haven't actually prepped it. Um, so I'll show you how to prep it. Um, on the back you've got the colour in various languages, obviously including English. We've got French, we've got Japanese, I think. Is that Japanese still? Yep, Japanese. And um, German. I think it's German. Um, so what I tend to do is... Um, I use the balmy blue, get the English one, like that, which I stick on the front of my ink pad. Um, and I've actually always stuck another one on the back. Um, I tend to do the baby blue. Um, 
I tend to do the French on the back because I don't know, certainly can't even read Japanese um, like that. And then it doesn't, ma doesn't matter which way I put it into my ink caddy. I can find out, you know, I, I can just look at it and see, which, find out which is the colour, find the colour I'm looking for. So if we start this and we're going to see what it looks like on my grid paper. That's, I think I'll be editing video for the rest of the week. Right, I'm not going to stamp this off because I think it's a really nice colour. So I'm just going to give this a really nice press. Like that. There. That's beautiful. I like that. I think this is going to be my new favourite colour. Right. And again, I'm going to be doing this bit off camera because everything is conspiring against me today. Never, I don't think, have I ever had so many problems trying to film a video. I've had cats in the way. Yes, I've had phones ringing. Oh, yes. I've never had cats ringing. No, cats ringing. Phones ringing, doorbells, cats, wobbly tables. Yeah, I've had enough now. I think I want to go and sit in a dark corner. Right. So, just get your framelit so it is around the leaves. Like that. Perfecto. I hope. Otherwise I will burst into tears and run away. It's one of those days today. And obviously the measurements for all the card stock will be on the blog because if you understood anything I said earlier, it will be an absolute miracle. Right. Let me put this uh, on this place or not do that later um, and I need the big shot once more for where did the other one go yeah, it was just... <laughs> right so for this I think the easiest thing to do is to first of all work out which is the right way up Uh, which is that way, I think, because then these will these will fit around. Oops, need my pokey tool. It's left a couple of little bits like that. So it's going to be there and. going to go there. Mm -hmm. Or is it? Is that right? Doesn't look right to me. Hold on a moment. I think it's that way. That's better. Right, so what I find is just dotting this Just tiny little dots like that, just round the edge. Like that. And then pop that on. Um, and because Tombow dries clear, so to there, oops, then, which is just as well, isn't it? Um, it shouldn't be seen when you've finished your box. There we go. But I don't really want it on my window sheet. 
that. Let's put this on first. And then I can, it covers that little bit. So that's fine, 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 fine. So I'm just going to let that dry while I cut out the last, the last piece. And I'm going to again, going back to this, what did I put on the other one? Thank you. So I think that works well. And what I did though was, let's find a block, I cut out the, um, the element first. I tried stamping it and then cutting it, but actually I couldn't get it quite in the right place. So I think I found it easier to um, stamp the element and then, uh, sorry, cut the element out and then stamp it. So back to the big shot. got a bit of cardstock and just pop that on anywhere there back on the magnetic 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 plate I think I need a drink put that coffee um, and then I'm off camera as I can get it away from the table we have thing, element, tag, tag, um, like that, or like that, back with the balmy blue, then what I found was it didn't quite do it it looked really plain so I'm just going to ink up the stamp like that different bits of it so you get sort of this is a sort of tendril bit and because it's photopolymer, you can see what you're doing. I think that's enough. Oop, oop, sorry. See why this table's wobbling so much. And unplug the phone. It's driving me nuts. Right. Um, my dimensionals are on here somewhere. Very good job. My team leader can't see the mess on this desk. There they are. And I just used a couple of these little edge pieces. Popped one there and one there. I'm just taking off the backing. I put it slightly on an, a jaunty angle, I think we'll call that. And then we can make up the lid. So we're just going to cut and notch those out. And um, so we could see them. Doesn't help. I think facing the window, I mean, I get more light that way, but the sun shines in my eyes and I can't actually see what I'm doing. I think. Maybe not. I'm just 
really wary of the table wobbling and the camera falling again. Definitely going to have to get this sorted out. Oops. And oh dear, I'm going to cut this last bit. And I'm just going to. I've got a slightly over the edge, so just trim that. And um, before we actually put it together, I got my hole punch out. Unless the creatures have bumped it off. Definitely got my hole. Oh, there it is. And then you can put it where you like. You can put it on the sides if you like. I've got it on the front and back. Just eyeballing it. Just gives you just a little somewhere to put, to make the box easier to open. Again, if you don't want to, you don't have to. So let's just get backing off the tear and tape like that. Now this is interesting. This cardstock doesn't feel quite as thick as the Highland Heather. Um, it's the same weight of, of card, so I wonder whether the ink makes a lot of difference. I guess it does. One lid. And on the box. And I've done them. Oh, deliberately, of course. I've done them so that you've got them in um, sort of landscape and portrait. Not a huge amount of difference in the sizes of the box. So, as I said before, you could actually do a square quite easily. Um, I'm not quite sure whether this one's quite in the middle. But um, the two of the new colours, Balmy Blue, Highland Heather, which I think are both absolutely stunning colours. Um, I think this one particularly, I'm going to use them both a lot, but this one I just... I've completely fallen in love with. So, an interesting video for all the wrong reasons, I think. I hope you like the project. Apologise for all the messing about and off I go and edit. See you soon. Bye bye.